Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. And it's the PVF on YouTube. The Columbus Fury back at home and trying to get out of their funk as they welcome the lead leading Atlanta Vibe with three weeks to go in the regular season. And welcome courtside, everyone. Neil Seekin with the Ohio State Hall of Famer, Audrey Flaw. We are here to have some fun. These are two teams going in completely opposite directions. Seven victories in a row for Atlanta. Six straight losses for the Fury. And we start with them because to get back to even thinking about a postseason berth, where do they start? Yeah, well, they start tonight. They're in a must-win situation. They've had a bunch of lineup changes. So really, it's about building some rhythm and some cohesiveness as a unit. Well, Atlanta right now, they are in the catbird seat. They've already clinched a playoff spot. They'll be in Omaha in mid-May. And a team with continuity, cohesion, and really the sum of its parts that leads the way. Yeah, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole, right? And that's exactly what you with this Atlanta team. They are so good individually, but together they are on fire and they are on the top of the league. So well respected. Coach Dejeuner says this team has it in all aspects of the game. He's really proud of what they've been able to accomplish so far. Inaugural season of the PVF. Let's look at the standings. We mentioned that Atlanta's at the seven straight victories. Columbus, they've lost six in a row. Their last victory, though, came against the Vibe at the end of March, and they're only two and a half games out of that four spot, but their margin for error is at a premium. Yes, as you can see, opposite ends of the spectrum here in the Pro Volleyball Federation League. The top one at the bottom, and like we said, a must-win situation for the Fury. For Atlanta, they come in, we mentioned the sum of their parts, the way they play in transition, the serve game, the block. Leah Edmond is at the centerpiece of what they've done. She's quickly becoming one of the big stars in the league. Absolutely. The most elite blocker and attacker. She averages 4.9 kills per set and has 34 blocks and 20 aces this season. A two-time SEC player from Kentucky, Edmond is a star respected in the league for her ability to take over a match. She's hit over 400 in three of her last six matches. Flip it over to Columbus, the roster turnover. Well, you could give Angel Perez a mulligan for what's happened over the course of the last month and a half during this streak. No more Asia O'Neill, but they do bring in Kendall Kipp. She was the third pick in the draft playing in Italy. This is her third match tonight, and they have really focused to her on the right side. Yeah, the rookie who joined the Fury about two weeks ago, Kipp is an absolute right side. Stud. Many know her from her Stanford career, Pac-12 Player of the Year and an All-American, a national champion. This athlete is a winner. She knows how to win. The Fury need her to be on target and on point tonight. Now Kip, who went over 20 attacks Wednesday night in Vegas before she got her first kill. So they will look at her and Reagan Cooper to take control tonight. Looking at the keys for Atlanta. Well, they've only got four matches left, Audrey, and Todd Dagenet wants to say it's not about Columbus, it's about us, and the focus emphasized on those last two letters, us, and what they go about their business tonight. Yeah, Columbus has had so many lineups that he really doesn't want to focus on Columbus's side of the net, but rather his side of the net. Second key is to have some positive block touches, and then he emphasized the transition kills. He feels like the team that dominates that category will be the team that wins. Well, from transition to what Columbus must do, and that's on the serve line. Absolutely critical for Columbus to serve efficiently. Coach Angel Perez understands that Atlanta has a great transition attack, and ironically, he said they have to slow down that transition attack. The last key for Columbus is they have to get the middles involved. Last match, they were four, five for 24. So if the middles don't get involved, absolutely things will tighten up for the right side and outside attackers for Columbus tonight. Big task tonight for the Fury. They start a three-match homestand here at Nationwide. And we'll come back. We've got first serve for you. League leading Atlanta and Columbus. It's the PVF on YouTube. Nebraska, where champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural
Brazil Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. crowd inside Nationwide Arena, hoping to see the Fury's first victory in what's been 26 days. March 24th, when they beat Atlanta in four sets, and the teams have went in the opposite direction since. Neil Sika, Andre Flaw, back with you. And for Columbus, they've won two of the last three first sets. Both of those were against San Diego, a good start narrative tonight but what do you need to see through the fury throughout the start throughout the course of this match to know that they're going to be in there to maybe take it in the end yeah well i think their um success will be largely determined by the middle efficiency they've got to get their middles involved that was one of the keys and if they are able to do that things will open up nicely for their very talented pin hitters especially Kendall Kip on the right side. Of course, the last 10 days, they are no longer with Asia O'Neill on the roster. Part of Karch Karai's group that will play in Paris and try and defend the gold at this summer's Olympics. Kip, her third match in Fury Colors, the standout at Stanford coming back from Italy two weeks ago, starts us off. Jones with an early block. And a tip again where Stringer, who started the season with Atlanta, has more trying to take down the first point. Member Menta was there to dig it with a great play on the back row. She's ready again defensively. Here's Edmund. Good rally to begin. Kip. The opening point off the block. Uh, Kendall Kip for the Fury. Ending the rally, but... I'm telling you what, Atlanta vibe backcourt defense by Lector member Mene kept the ball going in that rally. Kendall Kipp back to serve. Number Mena, now Edmund, all even at one. Well, Edmund found herself one-on-one -on -one against Stringer, and she didn't get a hold of that ball, but nonetheless, it's going to take a lot more discipline blocking from the Fury in order to slow her down. Moore is starting again tonight in place of Reagan Cooper, who was dealing with illness in the midweek, didn't play at Vegas in the thrill sweep. And Moore trying to take advantage of the opportunity she's been given. Scores down the line. Great transition dig by Kip on that right back area of the court. And nice tempo set to the outside. And then you see the great line attack. Such a hard ball to defend deep in the corner. Four great seasons. 
Ohio State then wrapped it up with all SEC honors at Tennessee. In the joust, the block goes in favor of the vibe. Mansoure, the rookie from Windermere, Florida, and they stand out for the Gators, earns the point. Now to serve, she's a connoisseur of film. They have been thrilled with her play, the rookie who had time in the beach season with UCLA and delivers an ace. Delivers an ace off the arms of Jen Moore. Again, as you mentioned, is inserted in the lineup there and they're gonna go after her often and drive her deep to the end line. And it was her play that cleared the way for the trade of Tori Stringer here to Columbus back on March 14th. Trying to go through the middle, but the block too strong. Very disciplined block here by Grace Cleveland. Notice how she comes in. She's a right side blocker. Understand that Kip is going to get a number of sets, even from the backcourt, does a good job of sealing the net. Cleveland was the starter to begin the year for Atlanta, and then they brought in a player from Russia. Anna Lazareva, who has been sensational, but resting tonight, having a week off, Edmonds. Right in her wheelhouse. I love the way Fanning drops and understands that that was not going to be a big attack from Megan Courtney Lush. She plays the tip and they're able to transition and score. This is, is exactly what Angel Perez was worried about, that their transition attack was going to score efficiently. They've got to be able to slow the ball down. Monterey serving. Courtney Lush is playing with a lacerated cornea. After taking a ball off the net, that's why she's wearing those goggles and going quickly and efficiently. And the sum of this group, and that's why they've been sensational, and there's Fanning chipping in. The defensive play by hence the libero was just outstanding. She covers so much ground, allowing the ball to be um, attacked by the setter. Pardon me, that was Cleveland earning the point. Jones tries to jam it down in the back. Cleveland goes again. Here's Kip. That's her patented shot where she made it shine in Stanford for her back-to-back Pac-12 -back Player of the Year seasons. Ends the vibe run. 6-2 in this opening. There's Caitlin Horde, who stands tall right down the straightaway. I love how Caitlin Horde is just waiting for the ball to be released and then is so quick off her feet, seals that net beautifully. Big point there for the Fury. She had four block points on Wednesday in the defeat to Vegas, but a serve error will cost the Fury. 7-4 Atlanta who have swept eight opponents, four of them on the road, including their last two. That's the most by far in the league. Ford, child's play. It was open on the back row. Ford gets up at the ball, can be set to her off the perfect pass of Megan Courtney Lush. When Courtney Lush is on on serve receive, the offense is spread out, looks really good for the Fury. So Stringer, the former coach, Todd, Dajane said he was heartbroken having to make that trade, but she deserved to start on a regular basis. Kip's block is strong. Remember Meta. Now set the attack, and Fanning gets it to fall. Fanning pushes herself away from the setter and is very vocal, allows the setter to give her the ball. Even though she had two blockers up her, manages to find a way to use the edge of the block to get a point. Shelly Fanning from Cypress, Texas serves. But the Fury responds quickly and Horde is having a great start to this one. We talked about how Horde has to get involved offensively. Both middle to get involved for doing a good job of being up. Distance away from the net is perfect. She scores on that cross court shot. Courtney Lush. Hence off the receive, now more. Stringer, Courtney Lush coming from the back. But the response, Yella Hashiva in the middle, providing the block. 
And this block for the Atlanta Vibe is so disciplined. They're just waiting. You see the respect that Courtney Lush has with three blockers up against her. Cleveland sends it down I-71 here in Columbus <laughs> for the ace. <laughs> Grace Cleveland, you've seen a ton of her game at Purdue. She was an exceptional player. And now getting the chance to start tonight with the rest of Lazareva. 9-6 Atlanta. Four. That's a good looking play. Yeah, that's a great out of system swing. What a great set by Courtney Lush. She does such a good job at all the little things that are needed to be done out on the court. Sets up her teammate perfectly, and there you see a shot that is undefendable there, right on the line. Box six says yes. On we go. A little amped up, Ella Hashiva. But it's going to be a block touch. So 10, 11, 7 Atlanta. The players had recent matches where she's been efficient, hit over 600 in two of her last five. More. To bring the heat off the left side, Cleveland. Good defense by Kip. A quickly in transition, Kip's back on the ready and blocks Edmund. There's a feature matchup for you. <laughs> it sure is. Kendall Kip, 6-5 and lines up perfectly. Look at how far over the net she reaches to seal that net. Took her over 20 attacks to finally get a kill on Wednesday in Vegas. The first set didn't go well for Columbus. They led the second for much of it and then wilted in the end. Calm and collected, Yella Hashiva with another one here in the first set. Yeah, the setter, Monsere, does a, just a great job of moving forward, setting the long ball, the unexpected set, puts it on a dime. Yella Hashiva, stand out at Washington State. Crawling off the side of Cleveland, what defense, but they weren't ready for the rumble of the fury, and Jones in the middle makes him pay. Oh, yeah, this is what Coach Angel Perez is talking about, that transition swing by the middle. Jones is ramped up tonight. Weaving in and out of the lineup. About a minute ago, she was in that starting role, and then Horde took it over. They're trying to find the right combination to break out of this six-game losing streak. Well, they're going to have to defend that better because <laughs> Edmund, one of the best in the business. Yeah, there you see a B and a go. You see the middle player go up, and right over top is the set to the outside. Really hard, putting a lot of pressure on the block to decide which hitter to defend. Monterey, the 24-year-old. Courtney Lush. And there's the block of Cleveland and Fanning working well. Off that pin. 14-9 Atlanta. They lost that match back here on March 24th, their last defeat, and then swept Columbus and hit a season high 371 in the process three days later. Into the donut hole, Courtney Lush got it to drop on the tip. Jen Moore with a really good pass. Lush with a very smart tip. She is tipping right in front of the big swing, Leah Edmond, trying to force her on the ground to play the ball. And then if it turns out as a transition swing, you don't have to worry about Edmond. She's on the ground. She's not going to get the set. So Lush, her IQ is exceptional on the court tonight. 14-10 Atlanta. And they bring on the serve specialist, Ivania Ortiz. Fifth year pro from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Fanning. Wanted to make sure that everyone in the arena swing. Does it again. <laughs> Kip tried to slide, but that's just too heavy from the Cypress, Texas standout. Yeah, Shelly Fanning right here. And I love how she gets up and swings with authority, even though two blockers are up against her. She fears nothing, goes hard for that kill. Atlanta, the first of 15. They're up plus five. Here in the first set, Columbus and Atlanta, the PBF here on YouTube.
as the stone continues to shine on the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation, the stage is set for the crowning of the champion. An energetic Saturday night here inside Gas South Arena. Vibe and the mojo and our first serve. In the heart of competition, Pro Volleyball Federation has ignited a firestorm of excitement. Captivating audience and athletes alike with every match. But behind every spike, every dive, there's been a force driving excellence. Grand Athletics. And then the solo block right on. Grand Athletics proudly champions the success of the Pro Volleyball Federation's first season. Here's to many more victories on the horizon. China Joseph with a... Welcome back to Nationwide Arena. 15-10 Atlanta. A sparkling 16-4 mark. And great balance, too, on the road. They're 8-2, and two, just like they are in their home building of Gas South Arena in Duluth, Georgia. Leah Edmond serves out of the timeout. Their team up five. Kip, a little heavy on that cross quarter. And yeah, when you talk about insertion of new players as Kendall Kipp. You know, that rhythm is going to be something that is going to need to be worked on. Now, Kipp is outstanding. Uh, she's got just a great resume in terms of volleyball player, but to hit effectively from that back row attack is going to need some rhythm and some practice. And there's Edmund again. And off the tip of the Columbus block. Which leads to two straight out of the timeout, and Columbus's Angel Perez wants to talk about it. The Fury at an early hole here at home. Yeah, Perez does not uh, wait to call that timeout. He understands he's got to regroup. There's, you know, a big gap here at 17-10, so it's critical for them to get this side-out attack and score a point. So it's going to take a lot of communication on serve receive and to be in system. Again, get the middles involved, open things up. Best hitter Kendall Kipp is in the back court, so we'll see if anybody in the front court will step up. If Kendall Kipp is in the back court, that means the setter right now for the Fury, Tori Stringer, is in the front court. So look to her for possible attack. The mobsters keeping people entertained. You saw a shot of the Atlanta huddle and Dajanay. In his first season, but had a wonderful run down in Orlando with the University of Central Florida. Had them in the Sweet 16 a couple of times. Got them inside the top 25 on four of his last six seasons there. And he's got a group that is the first to clinch an inaugural booth, an inaugural spot in the postseason. In Omaha in mid-May, out of the timeout. Last four to Atlanta overall. Grace Cleveland rolled it off the block, but Courtney Lush strong defensively. That's going to get over on the tip from member Meta. Also fanning in there to combine for another five point. Now Kip called the ball out, but as you can see there, just the edge of the ball touches the line, so... Another point for the vibe. Edmund serves for the fourth time. She's got four kills in this first set. A little pumped up on that one. The serve error. And she was just going for it. Nothing to lose at this sure. point. She was going to bring everything she had to that serve. Well, and they know the book on the Fury struggles in the receive game, and now that's been a problem during much of this six-game losing streak. Stringer serves for Columbus. Edmund Hentz, member Meta. Courtney Lush, she's got those libero tendencies from her days in Europe. And that pass along got more in transition. My goodness, say that again. More on transition. 
that's what this Columbus Fury needs, attacks like that. Triple block up and over member Mene to score. That was Janasia Moore. Coming off a nice game at Vegas, she had eight kills. And again, Reagan Cooper, team's leading point producer, was not involved in that one because of an illness out of the range in transition for Atlanta. Talk about a great serve. It took the middle for Atlanta completely out. Morgan Hans had to call her off. Now you're looking at a two-headed monster instead of a three-headed monster, which is a little easier to defend. So good serve there by the Fury. Stringer, they sent two first rounds to Atlanta for her services. And she's still finding her groove here. And Angel Perez confident in her future. Fury black and red, Kip. Just too powerful, even though the block was there from Fanning, member Meta. So important for Columbus to get some good touches off the block. We see that in the rally here. And then it's all Kip on that right side attack. You know, Coach Angel Perez talked about integrating the new players as smoothly as possible. And we're gonna keep seeing Kip reach levels with every match that goes on here. Um, and we're super excited if you're a Columbus fan sure. to see her on the court. And you saw 20 kills in her debut a week ago against San Diego in a five set loss. Columbus stringing a few together here after they were down 18 to 10 to get it within three. And it's been Stringer at the serve line acting as the catalyst. Member Meta says we're gonna put that to a halt. <laughs> oh, what an athlete. Just, I like to call her uh, the gift from the volleyball guy because at only 5'7", she is just a flat out player in every aspect of the game. And there you see what she is capable of doing. A hard cross court shot, completely undefendable. I love watching Member Mene play. Her head coach descri described that athleticism as wicked. That was wicked in the middle. Caitlin Horde. There's a three-time All-American showing what she can do. What a great set, though. Right in between the two blockers, and you've got to be up early and sealing that net if you have a chance to block the ball. Horde beat them to the spot and delivers a massive kill here to keep Columbus Fury in this first set. Kamali Hiapo, she had come on momentarily and now exits. Elahashiva back on for Atlanta. And it's long on the serve, hence reading that well. 2016 vibe. Grace Cleveland denied by the twine. And now Ivania Ortiz and Raynell Jones will step on for Valeria Leon. Not sure if you mentioned it, but Reagan Cooper is back on the floor for the Fury. So, uh, you know, uh, she, she's a huge factor offensively. We'll see what she can get done here in the first set. Third in the league in kills per set, but she's providing the block there with Jones to help earn her first point and a big one here late in this opening big open. 25. Yeah, she is a fan favorite. There you see not much the middle blocker could do there. It was all Cooper. 22 kills in the victory here the last time out. Montserrat with a little sleight of hand. Now sets Edmonds. That was to the back. Karen back into the attack. And for it, Kip and Jones says, we're defending it. Kip is almost a foot taller than member Mene, and boy, she takes control of that net. Ball went down hard on the side of the net. The Fury feisty. They've got back within one here late in the first set. A good one from Columbus, the PBF on YouTube. Omaha, Nebraska, where champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural 
Field Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. It's an 8-2 Columbus run and out of a timeout, they're within one. They're on their home floor, an overpass and tip. We'll never make a mistake on that. We're all even. We talked about the keys for Columbus was serving. That was going to be critical. Right now, they're doing a really good job of putting themselves in position to maybe win this first set. Serve here's a big one for Horde. Allie Linehan on for Atlanta. And now attacks Courtney Lush. Comes up clutch and passed it over. Linehan. Back to the Dayton native and Reagan Cooper. They say it's a little too much. She was hoping for a tip ball at the net. 21-20 Atlanta on the attack error. Might take a few swings to get her back into a rhythm. It's been a while since she saw action, and she had a monster game against San Diego in that five-set loss. That's more like it. Yeah. Beautiful pass. It was low, lower than the antenna. And Stringer was able to set a nice, fast set to the pin. And there you see the advantage that Cooper has going high off the block, out of bounds. First team all Big 12, that graduate year at Kansas. Monterey, sneaky. The best time to tip when you're moving across the net. There's no block on you. Great time to attack the ball. She knows what she's doing. Monterey, great attack for a point. Florida Miss Volleyball in 2017, the Gatorade Player of the Year there. In her home state, Whitney Bauer. It was the ninth pick in the draft out of BYU is on to serve. Cooper. Linehan digs. Edmund. Lobs. Stringer. Had Fanning go into the net. Fury even this thing up at 22 apiece. Tooth and nail. You know, it's funny watching this group. They look so loose yeah. at pass and receive. And I had asked Anel Perez, shouldn't they be ticked off? He's like, we've been ticked off for the last 10 days, <laughs> but they carried a lot of smiles this morning knowing yeah. that they play well on their home floor. They played well against Atlanta this year in this building. So Janaysia Moore, Valeria Leon, Rice Santos, they're on, Stringer and Kip, along with Horde off. Michelle Barch Hackley is on on the right side, so Angel Perez does this to really use Michelle Barch Hackley's ability to block on that pin. Moore almost had the ace. Funneled over by Linehan. Courtney Lush with a big swing. Edmund. Sneaky good first set from Janasia Moore. Hence calls everyone off. That pass over to Cleveland. And Moore wishing she had it back. Grace Cleveland, what a stud. 6-3 opposite, swinging from the back court and just goes high, deep corner. Such an effective shot. You know, she could start on any team. She gets the start tonight. Really like the play of Cleveland. Over 1,300 kills in her career at Purdue, but she's sixth all time there in blocks. They go to Edmund, and that tip took Columbus out of their rhythm. And Santos overcommitted, and now serving for the first set will be Atlanta. 
but a timeout first. We'll keep it here. Todd Dagenet, there you see, in the gray sport coat, what a job he has done. Was an assistant on the Olympic team back in Athens in 2004. And coming from the college game to the pro, we've seen that with some Hall of Famers. Well, he's a Upper Peninsula Hall of Famer, but this is right in his wheelhouse, the people management, and he's put together the best season so far in the league through 20 games. Yeah, you know, having talked to him a few times, I really like the way, as you mentioned, he manages people, and he does it with respect and with communication. The chemistry on this Atlanta Vibe team is so good, and I believe it's gonna carry them far and help them win points at critical times. This is a team that is a well-oiled machine, and they really trust each other on the floor, and that comes from a great leader. And they have that in Coach Dejeuner for sure. This they, Atlanta Vibe team does, yep. Andrew, they were four and three in January and February. Yeah. Then they went seven and one in March. Yeah. They're five and zero oh in the month of April. The thing is, they only have four matches left and yeah. three after tonight. They're done the first week of May. Well, conversely, Columbus will wrap up their regular season on May 11th, and it'll be a battle for those last spots. It's all still up for grabs, but for Atlanta, they can have a long time off, and it was interesting hearing the conversations of how they'll handle that, which is down the road in the future, but right now they're trying to close out set one out of the timeout. Winners of seven in a row. The Fury have dropped their last six and nine of 10. Edmund trying to put it to sleep. Moore's dig, Kip. Oh, hence comes up clutch. Cleveland can't beat the block of Courtney Lush, which has always been her hallmark, that defensive prowess with the block on the left. Oh, my. It's the little things. Take a look at this. That ball is in, I think. From this angle, it looked in. So there is going to be a little bit of a review here. Our referee, Bill Stanley, is up top, and then Bill Thornburg, who's been in Columbus quite a bit, is down on the floor right in front of us. And he said he didn't see where the ball was out. There's Bill Stanley, who hails from Nebraska, right in the heart of where the championships will be, the inaugural PVF championship. The top four teams in the standings make it. Columbus currently two and a half back, and that's the other thing. They've struggled, yes, Audrey, but there are games in hand, and if they can just find a way to manipulate at mm -hmm. least their opponents here at home and pick up some victories, they could be right back in the thick of that four spot. Yeah, when you look at their roster, they're scary good. They're, you know, really complete, but their record doesn't reflect the talent that they have. So they've, they've just had such a moving lineup players in players out and this game is all about rhythm it takes yeah. three contacts on one side of the net lots of trust needs to be established so they are playing almost like a team that you would see how they would play in january you know they're reflecting that the point is given like it was in the beginning 24 23 yeah the molding of clay that's yeah kind of what they've had to deal with Bringing in Barch Hackley and Nicoletta Perovich midseason. She's nursing an ankle injury and losing Asia O'Neill. But hanging tough with the top team in the league. Down one here, serving. Edmund ends it. Goes right at Kip and the opening set to Atlanta. And the star shines brightest when they need her most, Leah Edmund. Yeah, exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. When this vibe team needs a big point, critical times, Edmund comes through all the time. Atlanta, 25-23 in the opening set. A good one starting it off here in Columbus. This is the PVF on YouTube.
Atlanta on the strength of six kills from Leah Edmond in that opening set take it 25 23 back inside nationwide arena hottest team in the league winners of seven in a row and 12 of 13 yellow Hashiva serving to start set number two Montserrat she set Linehan from the Whoa. back row and transition D and Kip. Well, it's tattooed. Yeah. Really difficult set to make. Bump set behind you. That was Tori Stringer putting it up perfectly for Kip to just do what she does so well. A bomb from that backcourt. Well done. Columbus Fury. They must have done that 50 times this morning in the opening pass and receive. Just receiving balls, Stringer setting Kip. All even at one after Cleveland and Linehan in on the attack. Kendall Kip had four kills and four digs in set one. Marley Monterey, serve error. What I like about Monterey, she, she serves the ball in the net and then it's just still such positive energy. She just doesn't know any negativity whatsoever. She is a great leader for this team, exactly what you want from a setter. Plays the position so well. Easy tap home for Horde after the overpass. Serving is so critical for Columbus. If they can get some easy points off of the serve, it'll make this match a lot easier for them. That was a huge one. Courtney Lush. Picks out Linehan, Grace Cleveland. Picks out Courtney Lush, that's intelligent. Knew she had to get back to that spot. The pass puts Monterey in a position where she can set multiple players. She is so good. Puts it right where Cleveland needs it and a great cross court shot. Edmund. Ford swats it over Cleveland's tip. Moore had seven digs along with Courtney Lush to lead the way for the Fury in the opener. And Courtney Lush pass, finds Moore. And now they team up offensively. Janesha Moore really holding up here. She's been really good on serve receive and then taking these big swings, fearing nothing right now. She's six foot on the roster. I think she's a little bit shorter than that, but comes up big time. Ohio State alum, then Tennessee, her fifth year. Doing a great job right now for the Fury. She hit over 350 in her yeah. career right here in old Columbus town. And then had a great season at Tennessee. It's more about confidence with her, right? She wasn't getting maybe the swings early in the season with Cooper in and out of yeah. the lineup recent weeks. Now's a chance for her to feel some of that confidence. Oh, confidence is huge. But then it's also for someone that's undersized, it's the tempo and speed of mm. the set. She needs it faster so that the block isn't fully set up when she takes a rip at the ball. Horde serves. Fanning almost got it to drop. There's more. With that heavy swing, we've got a net infraction on Fanning and a Fury point. And they've started the second set well, 5-2. <laughs> Fan appreciation night, everyone having a good time. Even the birthday girls out there. Caitlin Horde on the national championship at Penn State. Tried to get back on the ready, but not on that quick swing coming in transition from the Atlanta D. Yeah, fanning such great hang time. Again, you've got to be up and ready, and then she takes a swipe at the ball, hitting it high right in that corner. Good shot, Fanning. Part of the collegiate national team. Stalwart at Baylor in four years. Jostled loose into the net, and Columbus couldn't pass it over. You can see how Kendall Kipp had to slow down her approach in order to have that tempo. Uh, with the set, so she needs it faster. She is ready to go, and I think that's part of that uh, communication and just having the reps. She needs the ball faster, is gonna demand it. Raynell Jones. Known for her defensive prowess, but yeah. I mean, once in a while she can do this. Yeah, great set. 
Distance off the net is perfect so she can swing right through. The excellent blocker out of the University of Maryland. 6-4 Columbus. There's Jones, and that's her wheelhouse. Yeah. That's what Raynell Jones is known for. As you mentioned, she does an exceptional job. Lateral speed is so fast, and then see at the point of contact, she's wiping it back to the middle of the court, not getting used. First and career blocks in College Park. Kip serves, three-point fury advantage. 25-23 Atlanta in set one. Moore. A little amped up and a little long. And we're going to have a challenge. And Angel Perez, who's <laughs> got that eagle eye. Yeah. He's been a master of these things throughout the year. It's unbelievable how receptive he is to seeing things in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I mean, he can see things that most other people cannot. And uh, he trusts his team, too. If they say, coach, challenge it, he will definitely do it. But you are absolutely right. He has seen uh, a lot of challenges go his way because he just is really dialed in and looking very, very closely at what's going on on the floor. Now the Puerto Rican who played one season at BYU. Does it look like there's a block touch? After Moore's ball went long, it will stay in Atlanta point. And he's one of the bright young minds in the game and all his colleagues across the league who have either coached a long time at the collegiate level yeah. or in the Hall of Fame have sung his praises. Yeah, very well respected and uh, such a likable coach as well. Always been really, really open to chatting with us and we certainly appreciate it. Linehan, there's Courtney Lush, another dig. Slapped over by Moore. Grace Cleveland they tried to tool it. It was out of range. Talk Fury about, point. yeah, sorry. Talk about Megan Courtney Lush. Just a long player defensively, covers a lot of ground in that backcourt corner. This really does a good job of keeping the ball alive, allowing her team to get a transition swing. Played in Poland and Puerto Rico and Italy and has a libero background, of course. MVP of the Super Cup there a couple years ago in Italy. 8-6 after the serve error by Columbus. Ali Linehan, you may have known her as Stumbler in her days at Kentucky. Serves and now digs and fellow Wildcat Edmund with Kip. Just drilled, Edmund was in the net. It's too bad she was in the net because Morgan Hens, what a great dig down the line. Take a look at this. Wowza. Megan Hens doesn't like that net call. <laughs> she can put it on the highlight reel later. That's you won't right. know the, the point was actually given to Kip. There's the serve error from Jones. So Atlanta just hanging within striking distance, even though the Fury have started well here in set two. Yeah, two back-to-back -back service errors for the Fury. That's not what they want from the end line. Yela Hashiva from Czechia near the Slovakian border. Kip, that overpass on the dig by Linehan, and then Caitlin Hoard's gonna make sure Columbus capitalizes. Yeah, not much you can do on that. When the quick set is set past the left side blocker here, there's no chance. So that ball actually went in between the middle blocker and right side blocker for the vibe. So if that ball was passed closer to the right pin, the left side blocker can get involved that time. No chance for that vibe block. Five kills for Horde. That's a violation on Columbus. And Atlanta answers back. And you see the ball is out, but like you said, touch on the block. Vibe's got control of the ball here. They'll serve Mosseray. 24-year-old. Won 48 beach volleyball matches at UCLA. Over to Edmund, Courtney Lush, and Horde almost jumping out of the gym. <laughs> Courtney Lush, it's rotation one. So as a left side player, she is on that right pin. 
You can see she does an exceptional job of lining up. She knows where the ball is set, knows the possible attacks. Seals that net, Edmund, no chance. That's some mom energy right there. <laughs> the young daughter, Nora, born less than a year and a half ago. Little hand. There's Courtney Lush. Linehan and Montserrat nearly collide. Edmund, her swing. Courtney Lush gobbles it up again and more poses. Boy, those two have been foundational pieces early in this one to keep Columbus motoring. Yeah, that's a great shot. That cross-court shot is so hard to execute. Again, Megan Courtney Lush, key dig going to her left in the left back corner of the court. Largest lead of this second set. It's four for the Fury. Linehan comes with a back row attack. Leon doing what she does best. And again, Stringer over. Monterey setting Fanning. Kip with the effort. Monterey on two. Moore. And the block from Fanning, we had to look back just to make sure it fell because it seemed like there were about eight Columbus players the way they were digging those balls. Yeah, uh, Janesha Moore just uh, kind of running out of patience, takes this ball that was set low and inside and just goes into the belly of the block. Got to be able to handle the sets that aren't perfect. So that one low and inside, you got a tool, you got a tip, you got to set up the point some other way other than going hard right in the teeth of the block. 12-9, they mop up the wet spot. And Leah Edmond, who's going to be in the conversation for league MVP, the way her season is gone. Serving, and Columbus got right into rhythm and did what they wanted to get it over to Kip. Yeah, this is a great approach by Kip. When she approaches like that, when she is accelerating to the ball, taking good rips on it, that's what you want to see. So well executed there, good timing, good rhythm. She's with Firenze in Italy. They missed out on the postseason, but Columbus happy to pick her up in these late stages, and their block is strong. Renell Jones just staying put, just reading the play, keeping her hands high, sealing the net. That's what she does best, and she's doing a great job here tonight. Vibrant group right now, leading by five, 14-9. Linehan made sure the life of that one came to an end quickly. That is such a difficult shot to execute. The ball is coming quickly, and there you can see she's facing the left back corner, hits over her left shoulder, down the line with a lot of speed. Stringer, Kip, sayonara. And you can see why Kip was Pac-12 Player of the Year in 2022 and 23. My goodness, that was a thunderous hit. Great response from Columbus. The Fury up five, the first of 15, and set two after Atlanta took the opener. It's the PVF on YouTube. Finally over, a concept years in the making becomes a reality tonight. We have stars that are sure to make a splash in terms of heads. There are stars everywhere you look. No secret that tonight is going to be epic. Prepare to make history. And we are underway in From club or high school courts to championship arenas, Spalding has been the trusted partner of volleyball players for generations. Our team of dedicated professionals isn't just about selling equipment, we're about supporting your journey. Spalding offers a comprehensive range of high performance systems, nets, and accessories meticulously crafted for every skill level, budget, and playing style. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, Spalding's knowledgeable staff will guide you, equip you, and cheer you on every step of the way. Pro Volleyball Federation, where every action carries the weight of passion and pride. There's a select group that rises above the rest. 23 athletes of the Pro Volleyball Federation are past or current members of the USA Women's National Volleyball Team. Each a testament to dedication, skill, and relentless pursuit of excellence. 
Pro Volleyball Federation, building champions and making dreams a reality. Welcome back. Kendall Kipp serving out of the timeout, but Atlanta got in transition and a much needed point out of the timeout. Kip with seven kills, lead the way for Columbus, serve error for Atlanta, 16-11, and Jen Moore back to the line for the Fury. Linehan on the receiving end, Edmund, Stringer, and Jones team up on the block. Stringer, Kip, good luck. Almost unstoppable, and yeah. it was when it's, she played for the Cardinal. Yeah, it's jaw-dropping good. The rhythm there, again, when she is taking a long runway and accelerating to the ball, boy, she is one of the most talented players in the league. Columbus Fury sure happy that she is on their roster. And it's her third game. She was, of course, selected by Columbus in the third round, 15th overall, and then decided to start off. They had some conversations. I'm gonna go test the waters over in Italy, which is really one of the top pro yeah. leagues in Europe overall. But right now she's finding her groove. Atlanta trying to stay atop the PVF standings. They've played 20 matches, and right behind them, Omaha, who's 11 and six, Grand Rapids in third, San Diego in fourth, but Omaha making a big move earlier today, and Stephanie Samity, a four-time All-American, two-time Big Plant Player of the Year from Minnesota. That is a huge acquisition for the Supernovas. Yeah, she is a right side attacker, and boy, is she ever dynamic. She's replacing Nia Reed, who has been injured most of the season. We've seen Nia Reed on the roster for Omaha and on the court occasionally. She was never really healthy over a long period of time, so the acquisition of Samity is absolutely huge for Omaha. They have three games in hand. Atlanta, they have played the most in the league at 20. Springer got caught up off on the right side with Kip, who took a spill. Atlanta needed that out of the break. A second timeout in about 90 seconds. So Linehan with the vibe trailing 17-12. It was just after they overlapped two seasons with Edmond at Kentucky. Linehan and Edmond. And now they go to Edmond. And that will go after Stringer and Jones were around the net. Yeah. Really tempting after you touch the ball on the block to be impatient and play it right away. You can actually let the ball drop, drop, drop. Bend the knees so that you're not in any position to touch the net. So just a little impatient there by Stringer. Four-point lead. Fine Kip. Trying to carry the load here late on in the second set. 18-13 Columbus. Now go back to Wednesday night, and it was right around this time they had a five, six point cushion. And we're stymied down the stretch. They'll bring out Ivano Ortiz. And these are the moments, too, when you're putting this roster together, you need to finish the job and find your execution to get this thing even. Any which way you can out of this six-game slide and Ortiz, much too long. 18-14 on the serve error. Hands out. Yelahashiva steps away. Member Mena, who started collegially at Missouri and then finished at Pitt. And she was a second-team All-American. Led the Panthers to the Final Four in 21. Digs that ball from Horde. Their team down four. Horde and Courtney Lush having some type of a defensive performance. Horde real patient on the block, just waiting and then has great lateral speed. That was all Lush on that block there. So Lush really being able to read the play, knowing there's that back row attacker. She has to stay home at the net. Does a really good job of reading that play. 
She's got three blocks, 10 digs. Courtney Lush spilled after Fanning got over to work the right side. Fanning really does a great job of working behind the setter, taking the ball that's not perfect and managing to find a way to score. That's a sign of a great player right there. Seventh kill for Fanning. 1915 Fury. Horde. That's heavy. And hit with a lot of heart. Caitlin Horde. Janasia Moore really holding up very well on serve receive. You see the end of that play, but that was made possible off the arms of serve receive from Moore. Megan Courtney Lush serving. Edmonds. Turned it toward the Olin Tangi. Way too much. 2015 Columbus, the five point cushion. It's that rotation run for the vibe where the left side attacker is actually in serve receive on the right side of the court. A little out of rhythm there by Edmonds. So easy point when that ball is swung out of bounds. 2015 Columbus late in this second set. We'll step out. It's the PBF on YouTube. Stone continues to shine on the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. The stage is set for the crowning of the champion. An energetic Saturday night here inside Gas South Arena. Vibe and the mojo and our first In the heart of competition, Pro Volleyball Federation has ignited a firestorm of excitement. Captivating audience and athletes alike with every match. But behind every spike, every dive, there's been a force driving excellence. Grand Athletics. And then the solo block right Grand on. Athletics proudly champions the success of the Pro Volleyball Federation's first season. Here's to many more victories on the horizon. China Joseph with a. Out of the timeout, Columbus by six, trying to even things up at a set apiece. Megan Courtney Lush, the crescendo of the crowd, hoping that that would have <laughs> fallen over on the other side, but it's a serve error. 21-16, and Leah Edmond tries to rev the engine for the vibe. Stringer for Moore. Hence, with a late reaction, she was shielded by Linehan. And off the receive, Courtney Lush ran into Valeria Leone. Yeah, both are super aggressive back row players, both very capable, both wanted to pass that ball. So an unforced error there by the Fury. Two straight for the Vibe. They go to Kip, who's got a game high, nine kills, make it 10, that falls. Well, Kip's big swings that were that we saw prior to this, really set this tip up. Everybody on their heels, playing perimeter defense, waiting for another thunderous shot. And she mixes in a tip, perfect spot, perfect timing. Big volleyball family, of course. Sister Casey at UC Santa Barbara. And Conley went to Washington State. That's a serve error from the Fury. Inching closer, up four. 22-18. Now Fanning. Kip. Fanning's there. Montserre back for Edmund. Steers it over. Kip again. Fanning. Grace Cleveland. It's down. A little bit of a delayed reaction. They did say tip. The initial call was a block touch, but I think Angel Perez wants to say, I don't believe it was. And there will be a challenge. And a crucial challenge at that late in this second set. Now we see Leah Edmond up at the official stand, wanting some clarification here. 
Hassan Block six that the ball was out, but Bill Stanley had given the indication that it was tipped. Yep. And we are on the opposite side. From here, I did not see a touch, but let's take a look. I don't see yeah, one. I don't see one. On Hell Perez, eagle eyes. <laughs> Boy. He knew. He knew. And the Fury claimed the point after the attack error from Grace Cleveland. Twenty-three eighteen. It's a lot different than it was twenty-two nineteen. And Kip, the wry grin, she'd like that back. The serve error. And you can see point of contact so important when you're serving. Got to keep that hand high as soon as you bring it down. Tendency is to hit the ball low into the net. Kip, an unforced error there, gives an easy point. Over to the vibe. And Whitney Bauer stands at the serve line to hopefully spark a run for the vibe and Todd Dagenet. Well, we have a little break here. We should note that both teams have a front row setter, which means two front row hitters, but always a back row attacker. Leah Edmond, as we've seen, excellent from the back court. Kendall Kip for the Fury. More off the first pass. Stringer, Kip, just like they've been working on all day, and the Fury will serve it up for set two. Starved for success here in Central Ohio, and Hanging tooth and nail with the top team in the league. Trying to even things up and put an end to this six game losing streak. Ways to go, Barch Hackley on. More serves. Barch Hackley, the gold medalist in Tokyo. Linehan with Leon. Right down to one knee on the dig. Courtney Lush. Long. But the horn went off. On El Perez saying it was a block touch. And that should be our set. We'll see. Now some people at home might be wondering, well, who sets when Stringer's off the court and on Hal Perez puts Michelle Barr Tackley in? Well, anybody sets a second ball. It really doesn't matter. The reason why Angel Perez puts Bart Hackley in is because she's a bigger blocker. She's 6'5", as opposed to Stringer, who's 5'11". No touch. Vibes stay alive here in set two. Now Stringer back on for Bart Hackley. In serve receive, you need your setter running the offense. So this is why she is in there. They want to get a good set in tempo to the best hitter on the floor. Just like they called on you back in the day, right? Kip. What a job by Hentz. Montserrat ran into Edmund. It stays alive. It's Kip. It's the Fury taking set two. What a night for Kip. Coming alive in the second set, all even at one. Kip has star power. What an amazing athlete. What an amazing volleyball player. The Columbus Fury riding on her shoulders here to win the second set. Eight of her 11 kills in set two, and the Fury take it 25-20. All even, a set of peace, and a good one here in Central Ohio. And our intermission after our opening two sets. We'll be back with set three momentarily. You're watching the PVF on YouTube. Nebraska. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. Nice catch, Brown, just too good. So 
Ariba. Perfect on nine. He's just an assassin. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. Tara Tomcom out of Thailand, a very, very gifted and experienced international setter. Tomcom is so good in defense and also in transition. Beautiful play to the outside. Five foot five out of Thailand for 16 years of professional. Always pushes the pace. I love her choices too, offensively. continues to shine on the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. The stage is set for the crowning of the champion. An energetic Saturday night here inside Gas South Arena. Vibe and the mojo and our first serve. In the heart of competition, Pro Volleyball Federation has ignited a firestorm of excitement. Captivating audience and athletes alike with every match. But behind every spike, every dive, there's been a force driving excellence. Grand Athletics. And then the solo block right Grand on. Athletics proudly champions the success of the Pro Volleyball Federation's first season. Here's to many more victories on the horizon. China Joseph with a. From club or high school courts to championship arenas, Spalding has been the trusted partner of volleyball players for generations. Our team of dedicated professionals isn't just about selling equipment, we're about supporting your journey. Spalding offers a comprehensive range of high performance systems, nets, and accessories meticulously crafted for every skill level, budget, and playing style. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, Spalding's knowledgeable staff will guide you, equip you, and cheer you on every step of the way. Pro Volleyball Federation, where every action carries the weight of passion and pride. There's a select group that rises above the rest. 23 athletes of the Pro Volleyball Federation are past or current members of the USA Women's National Volleyball Team. Each a testament to dedication, skill, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Pro Volleyball Federation, building champions and making dreams a reality.
Back at Nationwide Arena, Neil Sika, the Ohio State Hall of Famer, Andre Flaw, having some fun. So we're a little faithful here on Fan Appreciation Night. It's the start of a three-game homestand for Columbus. And they're all even with the top team in the Pro Volleyball Federation in its inaugural season. Atlanta 16-4. They know where they are headed the postseason. Columbus wants to give themselves a chance, and that second set is much more like what they need throughout the remainder of tonight and the rest of the season. Kendall Kipp, 12 kills, a match high. She had eight in the second set. And on that overpass, it will go for the opening point of set three. Not a bad way to start off. Kipp was so good in that second set with eight kills. Here you see that ace that just drops. Montserrat, now 21 assists with Atlanta on the board. And more impressively, on the flip side, six kills for Lee Edmond in the first set. She didn't have one in the second for Atlanta. Here she serves. Kip. 20 kills in her debut, just six on Wednesday night in Vegas in the sweep. It will not be a sweep tonight. Leon lays out. More tips. Monterey, hence. Edmund, cheeky. Cheeky, smart, whatever you want to call it. Right in front of Kendall Kipp. Why? This is a down ball. Even if Kipp digs that ball, she's on the ground, and now you can focus on other hitters. You've got Jen Moore on the left side, Raynell Jones in the middle. Obviously, the big threat offensively would be Kip. So you get her out of the transition offense. So smart shot there by Leah Edmond. And the arm sleeve she was wearing appeared to give way. A little floor burn. Felix Gordillo, the athletic trainer, gives it a look. It's been interesting to see how this game, too, has also been manifesting itself, Audrey, because Reagan Cooper's been available. She came on late in that first set, and that's what Columbus eventually is hoping for, having those two threats. But right now they manage well through the middle with Horde and then Kip taking over in that second set. Yeah, and Janesha Moore just doing a really good job on serve-receive and really not taking herself out as far as erroring when she's swinging at the ball. So she just has to be efficient, manage the sets that she gets, 
don't have to win on her shoulders. She just can't error herself out of the match. Five the last two. Edmund serves. There is more. Having a nice game, but the block of Cleveland up to the task. Really difficult for the setter, Tori Stringer, to do anything else but set a high ball. You see where she is in relation to the court. So she would have had to make a perfect set, a long distance set to Kip on that right back area of the court. Atlanta's been really strong in third sets, especially out of tie breaks. They've won 16 of 22 this year. Linehan has them going in the right direction. Yeah, serve receive offense for the Fury right now is not crisp. They're giving easy balls, and again, Vibe just taking control, transitioning, and scoring off the first swing. This is where games have had a tendency to slip for Columbus during this stretch of losing six in a row. Linehan, now Kip, that pass, and Moore, hence stands right in the middle. Edmund to Kip, and now Kip. All day long, she'll take that. Well, Hens has been so good digging the cross-court shot from the Fury left-side attacker, but is unable to handle that ball down the line. Big swing there by Kip. Telling her teammate of one season at Stanford, that 2019 season, good luck with it. That will get in to the back. Got to give a little bit more credit to Morgan Hens, who literally sits in front of the passer puts herself in position to play that first ball. She wants to take control of the backcourt. Does it beautifully for the vibe. Fanning knows how to take control of those gaps. And Kip just floating so poetically from the back row and then delivers the thunder with that swing. A little more finesse. It still works out. It's 5-3 Atlanta. Raynell Jones serving. Quickly through the middle, Yella Hashiva. She gives it a shout. Masare taking a ball that's passed to the 10 foot line and forces middle on that set. Really good set selection there by Masare. More on the receiving end, Leon, Courtney Lush. That was heady by Masare just to knock that over and then she's there for the block. She's doing it all. Yeah. Really, the advantage went to the block. That ball was set low and inside, was dying. Megan Lush tried to do the best she could, but really went low seam with that. So easy block and point for the vibe. 7-3 Atlanta. Monterey, Edmond, down it goes. Leon thought she had a beat on it, but it rerouted off a deflection. Sweet hands by Monterey taking that ball and puts it where it needs to be to lead Edmund to a big swing point for the vibe. Cleveland, Horde. Oh, there's Monterey. Trying to be crafty. Yella Hashiva with a big yell. And Atlanta roars out to a 9-3 start. Here in set three, yeah, timeout Columbus. Block really taking over for Atlanta right now. You saw three blockers coming in, diving in, the pin blockers did, to make sure that there was no room for more to swing into. They'll step out and come back with a 1-1 set of peace here in Columbus. And Atlanta leading early in set three, 9-3. The PBF on YouTube. Nebraska, where champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. Just an assassin.
9-3 Atlanta, set three here from Nationwide. We've stressed and already hit on the serve-receive struggles of Columbus. If you're on El Perez, what are you addressing right now here early in this third before it gets out of hand? Well, you got to call the ball early, and if uh, Courtney Lush can take, take control of serve-receive, that's a good thing. It's that game within the game. And for the Fury, it was breaking down ever so slightly. If the setter is scrambling and setting the offense from beyond the 10-foot line, not a good look. That time off the arms of Lush, ball is in system, and a good swing as a result. Horde with it, 9-4. Horde again. Hence, hump that over, and Horde will take the charity once again. Horde Nine is five. doing such a good job of just running the route. There you see the setter for the Fury is out of the pocket, going to the left front, and Horde just goes right to where she is. Beautiful attack. Got eight kills. Now there's an ace. Stringer against her former club. And she had 24 sets, seven matches. One of the faces of the league to start this season. Wearing Atlanta colors and now trying to find the groove in Columbus. Well, their team has out of the timeout, Courtney Lush. One of the best left side blockers in the league. Take a look, she's one on one. She goes wide with her hands and reaches over the net. That is a picture perfect block by Courtney Lush. 4 0 run for the Fury. Back within two. In a hand, Stringer, Moore, bullseye. Moore is having herself a night. Wow. When she starts getting hot in the backcourt, look out. Columbus Fury, well done, Jen Moore. Eight for Moore on the kill department. A little long from Stringer, my bad. 10-8, that ends a 5-0 Fury spurt. Allie Linehan. Eighth all-time at Kentucky and kills. But missed the mark, trying to reply from the line. 10-9, and now Megan Courtney Lush. The rotation for Fury will kind of Kip is front row, and so is Monterey. Oh. Edmund, it's gonna fall in. Well, Leah Edmund, who had that quiet second set. Much needed kill for her. 11-9 vibe, Ford. Oh, heavy work, great dig on a couple of occasions from Atlanta, and then Kip is going to kill it down. Here's what's setting up this entire play is the fact that Caitlin Ford is running her route wide all the way to the left. And even though that ball gets dug and returned, it's a free ball, which then sets up Kip beautifully. So the fact that you establish middle and keep your blocker at home is really serving to the Fury's advantage right now. That's good recognition from Fanning to see the opening across the way. Yeah, when the left side blocker moves in to help with the block, that area of the... pace she's doing outstanding her numbers really really good and then there's that curse, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, and then sur that. <laughs> the serve error yeah. she's got 16 kills that's a match high remember she had 20 a week ago in her fury debut basically right off the plane look at that just ripped it down the line 
He time and time again, all this repetition, and it's coming to life here. Yeah, you talk about the importance of the rhythm of the game. Courtney Lush putting the ball on the dime. You got Stringer setting Kip so well tonight. Fanning. internationally. I know that she was a left side hitter for the national team, a back row player, so she is so well skilled every aspect of the game. Courtney Lush is a star. Leon, Kip, that's long and wide. And this is what Tom Dagenet was referencing to us. Columbus hasn't put it together in terms of the wins and losses, but there goes the sum of the parts conversation. All the individual pieces of talent that the Fury have. They haven't been able to find their groove yet. Atlanta, not able to find the groove from the serve line, but you're seeing Horde, Kip, Moore, Courtney Lush, just little of those flurries yeah. from these Fury individual pieces. And 14 Co all. Yeah, Cooper's not on the floor, and could you imagine if they still had Asia O'Neal? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Only left to wonder. That's the thing, they still have seven more matches after tonight. Now, it's gonna be tough. See Atlanta and Omaha again, Grand Rapids. And they've got a job here to do tonight to end the losing streak. Nick Dig was not nearly in time to keep the passing alive for the vibe. All right, here's a question for you. The free ball set that Courtney Lush had over the net, is that a kill? I'd give her one. Oh, we do give yeah, her one. That yeah, is a kill. Yeah. Yep, it counts. <laughs> Count it. <laughs> Doesn't matter how it got there, right? <laughs> I knew you passed. You're testing my <laughs> aptitude already, and I like that. 15-14, Columbus. But will we have a challenge here? All the more impressive with Megan Courtney Lost. She's essentially doing this with one and a half eyes yeah. after the <laughs> detached cornea from. That's nothing to laugh about. No, and it's serious not. It's injury, a serious but thing. No, yes, but you're absolutely right. There are these elements of uh, the center line fault. It is a Columbus there. point. Yeah, yep. good catch there by the down official. Yep. But all these idiosyncrasies, not only the roster turnover, they're not making excuses for Columbus, but they've had players out for various ailments and illnesses that have popped up in each of the last two to three weeks or so. And every team could probably make a claim for that going on within their camp over the course of a long season. The Fury in front, 15-14. Hence, got over there on some straight fire from Ivanya Ortiz. Courtney Lush, what a dig again, hence. And now Edmund. That's just the sweet intuition from the back row. Yeah, just so smart. Knowing where to place that ball right over top of the block. You've got two people going hard for it, and that almost causes you to hesitate a little bit. You think, I'm going to smack heads with the other player. So really good job by Edmund. She's really picking on Kip defensively in that area. Kip's so skilled. She's running down these balls, but that time it gets away from her as her and Ivano Ortiz were going hard for the ball together. And the way this league is set up, you might be a fantastic attacker, Cooper, Kip, but you're going to be targeted in the serve-receive game on the def defensive side to be an all-around player and be effective. It was kind of San Diego's prowess a week ago. 15 all, more. And a shot out of a cannon from Linehan. That went into the net, or into the net went Atlanta, and Columbus goes up one. Megan Courtney Lush takes a ball that's set tight, gets her feet to the ball, and jumps straight up, avoids the net, hits the ball high off the blocker's hands. There were so many little things that she did well to get a point for her team. Don't want that to go unnoticed by the fans that are watching on at home. Courtney Lush 
More kills. She's got 12 digs. Ford rejection right in the middle. 17-15 Fury. Take a look at where Kendall Kipp sets the block. She's not all the way out to the pin, recognizes that ball is under set, moves in to her left slightly, reaches up and over. Yeah, and that much of that block to Kipp. Yella Hasheva. And held tight for a moment before coming down to the surface. Yeah, miss point here. You can see two Fury players in the vicinity to play the ball. That ball drops. You want to play that ball not only to try and get a transition to swing, but to frustrate the hitter on the other side of the net, force her to force the other team to take multiple swings in order for them to earn a point. Columbus taken 14 of the last 21 points. They were trailing 9-3 early in this set. And Courtney Lush trying to go cross court. Can't connect. Talk about a good serve. It goes deep, high to the left shoulder of Janesha Moore. Wasn't able to put that ball right on target. As a result, Fury scrambled on serve receive. Linehan, the Indiana native. Kip crushed it. Kip over top of Monterey. Take a look at the height advantage here, and you can see from that replay right over top of the shorter block. I like Kip on the left side too, wow. That was an area that the Fury struggled with. That was rotation one. Part of the Cardinals National Championship her freshman year, and then junior and senior, she was the Pac-12 Player of the Year. 18-17, Columbus. Kip with the tip. And again. Hence, Edmund Leon does the splits, got the dig. Courtney Lush off that pass. And a Hashiva, Horde. There will be a dent in the arms of that Atlanta block. So many good things that happened in that rally in order to set that up. And one was an effective block touch by Jen Moore on a huge swing from the vibe. And then, my goodness, Valeria Leon letting, laying out for a couple digs. So, so many great things. This is the sort of chemistry that you're looking for if you're a Columbus Fury fan. Extended rally and they come out on top. That's a big point, big play. Real big momentum switch for the Fury. Columbus 19, Atlanta 17 here in the third set. A quick break and back to Nationwide. This is the PBF on YouTube. Back out of the timeout, Courtney Lush was serving, and the transition from Atlanta, and Yella Hashiva able to terminate for the Vibe Point 1918. Columbus Country has essentially doubled up the Vibe in this third set after trailing by six early. Yeah, they're really playing so well, and again, they're controlling the serve pass here in the latter part of the third set. This can go either way. What an exciting match we have. My my Hiapo. And they're finding out quickly that Asia O'Neill may be off with the Olympians, but Caitlin Horde is not a bologna sandwich. She's <laughs> delivering the mail in the middle. I don't know what to say. 
to say to that. <laughs> yeah, Hord, Hord's doing a really good job of getting her share of points and really being a middle attacker that the vibe has to respect. She's gotten a lot of kills, big swings, tips. That's exactly what you want if you're a Fury fan. You gotta get that offense running from the middle. We talk about it a lot. That opens things up on the pins. Comes, of course, from a basketball family. Her dad, Daryl, played at Kentucky, was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Struggles in the middle for Fanning. Raynell Jones, who had just came on for Horde, rejoices. Rai Santos also in the mix here. Late in set three. She's serving right now for Horde and offering a little bit more defensively in that left back area of the court. So she is not setting, she's playing defense and serving. Now the libero will come in. Edmund wanted to cause pain and did so into the Columbus block. A vibe point, they're down two. They have not lost since they were in this building last on March 24th. Just a completely different looking Columbus team since then too. In the last 26 days, over hit by Cleveland. Gonna have a challenge. See if there's a block touch. Now that one happened right in front of us and I thought Cleveland was well over top of the block but I have been wrong before, and as you see, I'm wearing glasses, so I will leave it up to the officials to make that call. Well, then, leads us into the player that is wearing glasses tonight in the form. Megan Courtney Lush has done a little bit of everything. Mm, there you see it. We do see the block touch yeah. of Jen Moore. So that's big for Atlanta. Marley Monterey. Swiss Army knife of this five team, Leon. Courtney Lush. Is that too many touches? The signal was a backcourt block. So Stringer is in the backcourt and she went up to block the ball. I don't know why Angel Perez is arguing this, possibly just to try to... Bill Thornburg was right on top of it in yeah, front of us. A little timeout here without calling a timeout, just questioning the play. He did not like that call. You can see. We don't have to tell you because now it's all even at 21. Kip when in doubt. Janation Moore had a look back at Bill yeah. Thornburg. Give him a little stink eye to the down official, but take a look at the set. Stringer's all the way in the left back area of the court. Puts the ball exactly to her number one hitter. You can see a substitution here again. We got Barch Hackley in as a blocker on that right pin. That's usually the case. They're late in these sets. Long from Atlanta. The Fury take the next two. Grit, determination. Well, going back to the earlier comments too about their frustration and mm -hmm. what has transpired over these last three weeks. But after all, there's an element of wanting to have fun, right? Come out. Yeah. Play uh -huh. the game you love to play and see what happens because you know the talent is there on this roster. Yeah. Any athlete will tell you it's a lot more fun when you're getting those W's, though, right, Neil? So, yeah, I mean, there's that balance. You know, you can't just lose your head when you lose a match, but they've been close and then they've been actually blown out, too, in some matches. Yeah. So that's frustrating. It's perplexing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's frustrating when you know, you know, you're capable of doing better and, and, and it's just not falling your way. So, um, Again, let's talk about uh, the six that are out on the floor right now. Bar Tackley in, gold medalist. What a career she's had. Yeah. 
And she, she's in the front row right now to offer a bigger block on that pin. You can see right now the challenge is a touch, but there is no touch. Point's gonna go to the Fury. 23-21. There's still a perturbed look on Anel Perez's face. There was a little bit of gamesmanship there, knowing full well there was no net touch. Santos, Moore, and Saray. With the defensive effort from the back there from Atlanta to keep this rally going. Kip, Pence, Edmund. You can feel the intensity right now late in this third set. Moore, again, Hence. Unbelievable stuff. Kip, good night. How about that rally? I wish I could say a word. Holy moly, what a rally. Morgan Hentz with some huge digs and Kip. Wow, no block on her. Just a misstep there by the vibe, leaving that net wide open. Set point here for the Fury. One in four sets against Atlanta back in late March. A point away from a second straight set after falling 25-23 in the first. And Kendall Kip with 19 kills, one shy of her fury high in her brief Columbus career. In front of a rowdy 4,400 fans. Todd Dajanay still having discussions with Bill Stanley. Putting a little bit of a hiatus into what Kendall Kip and Columbus hope to be the final serve and point of this third set, leading by three. Edmonds says, talk to the hand. There's yeah. just a little bit of bickering back and forth right now with the intensity late in this third set. Quarterback for Columbus is back on the floor. Tori Stringer back in. For bar tackling. Yep. 24-22. Fury will try and side out now. Stringer. Kip. Columbus coming alive. Meet your new star, Kendall Kip. Forcing that ball to Kendall Kip, putting the ball in the hands of the winner on the floor right now, Kendall Kip. Wow, what a match she's having. 21 kills for Kip. Columbus 25 22 in set three. They lead 2 1, heading to the fourth at Nationwide. It's the PVF on YouTube. an assassin. where champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. Pro Volleyball Federation, where every action carries the weight of passion and pride. There's a select group that rises above the rest. 
23 athletes of the Pro Volleyball Federation are past or current members of the USA Women's National Volleyball Team. Each a testament to dedication, skill, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Pro Volleyball Federation, building champions and making dreams a reality. From club or high school courts to championship arenas, Spalding has been the trusted partner of volleyball players for generations. Our team of dedicated professionals isn't just about selling equipment, we're about supporting your journey. Spalding offers a comprehensive range of high performance systems, nets, and accessories meticulously crafted for every skill level, budget, and playing style. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, Spalding's knowledgeable staff will guide you, equip you, and cheer you on every step of the way. The Arena District is rocking. Columbus right now bottom of the PVF. Losers of six in a row, but you would never have known it. Taking up.
Run, just keep calling it. Just from our, just. You got this? We apologize, we've had some audio difficulties here at Nationwide Arena. 7-7, Columbus and Atlanta. A Valeria Leon pass that literally took the power out. <laughs> but we're working to get it back. Back and forth we go and set four. Kip, Yella Hashiva, and member Meta, who comes on here in the fourth set. She hadn't played since the first, but combines to help on the block. Yeah, let's take a look at this. The ball goes right into her hands, and she just doesn't give at all in the shoulder. Super strong. Really does a good job of pressing on that block. And Edmund steps in with a serve error. So it's 8-8. Eight, eight. And Janasia Moore. Seven kills, 11 digs for the former Buckeye standout, and then Tennessee Volunteer. Caught up in the wickets of Horde, and Courtney Lush tried to save it in the middle. So Atlanta up 9-8. They need it here in set four. The tip from Courtney Lush. This member Meta, despite the jostling try of Courtney Lush, who fell awkwardly the point falls and the five by two well, tips that are going over the block and into kendall kip are really challenging her defensively as you mentioned courtney lush kind of landed awkwardly i'm not quite sure what happened but she does need just a second to regroup 10-8 atlanta and we've been working with some audio difficulties, but a great job by our crew to get us back and running. And just like when the umpire yells, play ball in baseball, you're part of the action. We're on the floor. <laughs> ball took out our power strip and our audio connection for a moment. Member Meta assists the pass to Angel Perez, who got his hand out there. It was heading toward the Fury bench. And that was a furious hit from the second year pro out of Pitt. So he played in Italy the last two seasons, in the last season, and falters here at the net front. 11-9, the Vibe have won seven in a row. The six match losing streak for Columbus, it's the longest in the league for any team this year. Trying to put a halt to that. And they have played valiantly in their home barn tonight. Led by Kip and Horde and Howe hammered. Well, you can't give the Columbus Fury too many free balls. Horde puts herself in a great position to get set. Look at how she spaces herself between the two blockers for the vibe. So great distance from the setter. Great opportunity to score and win, and she does. She wins that point. 11 kills, a block touch from Courtney Lush. But the finesse just guided it out of play. 12-10 Atlanta. They came out of the intermission, they had the momentum, they were up 9-3, and then Columbus turned the screws. Horde, another heavy swing from the middle. Now, pass that over the head of Leon. Grace Cleveland. Kendall Kip. Leon. Montserre goes right back to the Puerto Rican libero. Defensive specialist, and it's snuck in there for Montserre. As a former setter, I could smell that one coming. I knew Montserre <laughs> was going to take advantage of this. Take a look. She sees good setters have the sixth sense. They know where that left side blocker is. Megan Courtney Lush was way out of it. No position to block the ball. And Montserre, you can almost feel that she was going to attack that ball because she knows, always knows, where's that, where that left side blocker is. Six cents of my Hall of Fame setter right here. I'm gonna we'll quiz you later. 
Remember, Meta serve error. 13 11. Tori Stringer gave up those two first round picks to acquire her. It's been a little helter skelter starting matches, then not finishing them. I'm trying to get the job done here tonight, long on the turn serve. The problem with that missed serve is it actually rotates Kendall Kip. You know, it, it, you want to keep Kendall Kip in the front row as long as you possibly can. So a missed serve really is a missed opportunity to keep her in the front row as long as you possibly can. She didn't miss that opportunity, though. She's been on fire tonight. All of the greatest hits are coming out for Kendall Kip. Yeah, she's mixing it up, and I'll tell you what, rotation one for the Fury has been problematic. Since Kendall Kip has, in, has been in the lineup, they get out of that rotation very quickly because she is so efficient from the left pin as well as the right pin. Five by two, make it three. Edmund tipping that over, trying to find her game a little bit more. She had the quiet second set. Atlanta the first of 15 in the set that they have to have if they're plan on making it eight straight victories. 15-12, set four. Columbus leading two sets to one. Back to Nationwide after this on YouTube. As the sun continues to shine on the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation, the stage is set for the crowning of the team. An energetic Saturday night here inside Gas South Arena. Vibe and the mojo and our first In the heart of competition, Pro Volleyball Federation has ignited a firestorm of excitement. Captivating audience and athletes alike with every match. But behind every spike, every dive, there's been a force driving excellence. Grand Athletics. Grand Athletics proudly champions the success of the Pro Volleyball Federation's first season. Here's the many more victories on the horizon. China Joseph with a... Atlanta leads 15 to 12. Midpoint of set four. And the five started this streak against Columbus back at home on March 27th, three days after their defeat. It was a home and home play three days apart. Looking for eight wins in a row. They won 12 of their last 13. Marley Monterey. Forward on the receiving end. Stringer sets Kip. He's got 22 kills, a match high. Edmund with authority, cross court. 16-12 Vibe. It's an exceptional shot there by Leah Edmund, number 13, for the Vibe. Lots of space there across court. Rips it inside that 10-foot line. That is unbelievable shot. Elite all-around player. Moore. A scuffle with Cleveland. There's Edmund. She's got two in a row. This time, tools to block. Great defensive effort and just keeping, just Staying with the ball really was Monterey just doing the best that she could. Puts up a good ball and then the cleanup crew there by the name of Leah Edmonds. She just takes any set that she gets and does something positive with it. She's so efficient. You know, you talk about kill percentage. It's kills minus errors over total attacks. And you want to just take advantage of some good sets. But the ability to score on not so perfect sets really is a sign of an exceptional left side hitter, and that's what Edmonds is. I've got the last two out of the timeout. Atlanta leads by five, 17 to 12. Angel Perez addressing his team. This is the start of a three-match homestand, but the Fury won't play for a week. They'll be back in action next Friday night when they get 
Orlando in town, and the Valkyries were really impressive the last time we saw them in this building. It was Easter weekend in a sweep over the Fury, and that goes back to the conversation we were just having. A match like tonight where it's tooth and nail, and right there with one of the league's best, or an Orlando team that came in and they were a wagon, blew the doors off yeah. of Columbus. So you don't know each and every night, and that's some of the parody with how we've seen the league from standing points three through seven. Makes it all the more exciting down the stretch with three weeks to go in the regular season. When you have Kendall Kipp, it's easy to design what you're gonna do out of the timeout. Uh, Caitlin Horde was coming in hard for that quick attack, and I love the way Stringer just holds the ball as long as she can and then flicks it back. Great tempo, great location, giving her hitter the opportunity to score. That's a setter's job. She did a beautiful job there with that set. And Atlanta with the infraction and the last two to the Fury out of the timeout. They've got within three. Dropped the opening set by two. Took the second set by five and the third by three. And Kip taking this match by storm. Jones in the middle, whether it's been her or Horde, really helpful tonight. It's important to recognize what a hitter can do with different sets, and that set brought the right side in. And Raynell Jones recognizes that, goes hip to hip with her outside. 3-0 Fury spurt. Stringer, the pass to Moore. It was out. That block was there from Atlanta, but it's the Fury's point. And just like that, they're back in it, 16-17. Now well, Fanning did her best, but couldn't control it enough. Yeah, when you're moving to the left side, your momentum is going that way. Your arms tend to reach out, so you really have to swipe it back to the middle of the court if possible. Easier said than done. Well, the Fury have come all the way back from down five in this fourth set, and that long ball Makes it 17 apiece. Missed opportunity there. Cleveland was one on one and hit it long. Attack error from the vibe. Another one. Columbus leads. Ball set way too low on that one. There was no opportunity for the hitter to swing. The ball never crossed the plane of the net. Easy point. Coach Dejanay does not like the way this offense is running right now. Needs to chit chat with his setter a little bit. I'm sure they'll get back in rhythm. They have Leah Edmond on the right pin. This is rotation one. We'll see if they stack to the left side to give Edmond a better look at the ball. That's where she scores a lot of points. She doesn't typically swing as efficiently on the right pin. So we'll be watching for the serve receive pattern when they come out of the timeout. Six in a row for the Fury. We'll keep it here. And they've taken an 18-17 advantage with the Atlanta timeout. And this is one of the things we were referencing earlier. It's one thing about player management, now about game workload. And I think it's important to revisit the fact that Ana La Lazareva not playing tonight for the vibe. She's taken the week off. Tadajane was referencing Sure, we could use her, but we need her in May when it matters most. But this is going to be the, the management part coming into full focus. You've clinched a spot. You keep your focus. How do you get to the finish line if you're the vibe with all the games that you won't be playing over yeah. the course of the last couple of weeks and a hungry Fury team trying to end your winning streak tonight? Board. Remember Meta. Stringer, Moore. Oh, the reach from Fanning. I don't know if it was going to get over anyway, but. 
Well, the interesting thing, the way that the vibe lined up was with Edmund on that left pin, but they set middle, so it really didn't matter. Jen Moore was trying her best. She was in a very awkward spot to put that third contact over the net. The best that she could do was have it trickle over the net. The ball hung at the net and then was tapped over. So it is a point for the vibe. 18 all. And there's the ace from the ace, Edmund, yeah. when they need it most. And that is a absolute perfect serve. You're going high over the shoulder of Jen Moore right in that left back corner. They go at Moore again. Kip jams it down right in front of member Mena. I'll take a look at this tip. She sees that the block is, there's space between the blocker's hands and the net, and Kip, what a great vision she has. She puts it right in between their hands and the net. Hence receives. Fanning, trying to flush it. Member Mena, Courtney Lush on the dig, Kip. Connects to the middle. A little two-hand touch from Moore. Courtney Lush, defensively, is doing an exceptional job tonight. Her back court in middle back, she's able to cover so much ground on her right side, left side, and that point really is on the shoulders of Lush and her defensive prowess in the back court. She has 14 digs. That leads the Fury. We're five points away. Rain L. Jones revved up, and so is this crowd. Take a look at Jones just smothering the ball at the net, and then her celebration afterwards. Boy, every person in the arena is having a great time tonight watching Raynell Jones doing her dance after she gets a big stuff block. We'll take a timeout and come back to Nationwide. Columbus by two, four points away from pulling off the big upset and ending some big streaks here late in this PBF inaugural season. You're watching it on YouTube. Omaha, Nebraska, where champions rise and dreams come alive. Get ready for an electrifying weekend of pro volleyball action. The inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation Championship takes over CHI Health Center. Witness the top four teams of Pro Volleyball Federation battle it out for eternal glory and a million dollar bonus. The match for a million, May 15th and May 18th. Secure your ticket today. Nationwide Arena, the home of the Fury. And a lot of the fans here, the 4,400 plus in a frenzy on this Friday night. Neil Sika, Audrey Flaw, the Ohio State Hall of Famer. Atlanta took set one, Columbus the last two. It's been back and forth in set four, and the Fury up to four points away and Kip serving. Moore terminating after the overpass. Well, Morgan Hentz doesn't often make a serve-receive error. She did, and Moore made her pay for that. Take a look at that overpass kill, and the Fury, they can feel it. The competition here tonight is bringing out the absolute best in the Fury. They are rising to the occasion. Kip to the back, Edmund. Another great block with Jones and Moore in the mix. The Fury can do no wrong late here in the fourth set. Oh, Moore just having a night. Boy, that block was key. Look at the celebration. Raynell Jones giving her teammate big, big props on that amazing block by Janesha Moore. Got a double-double, too, with 10 kills, 13 digs. Courtney Lush. Some late game, ad game adds for the vibe. Putting this one in Presley, who just came on. Kip crushed it. Barch Hackley's coming on. The Fury are serving for the match. 
Again, Bartakli in for a block or a block touch. Anything to slow down the attack by the Vibe. Vibe on their heels right now. Kip, Edmund. And that ball is in from Presley. Great set choice. You're going to set the ball over the shorter blocker, which is Janasia Moore, and you're not going to set the block into the biggest blocker that just got inserted for the Fury. So now, substitution. You got Stringer back in, the quarterback, Barchakli on the bench. Linehan. Courtney Lush. Kip can't close it out. And a clutch block in the middle. Hila Hashiva stands tall. The last two to Atlanta. Well, we've got an emotionally charged crowd, emotionally charged uh, both teams. And they're gonna challenge this one as uh, I think Coach on Hell thinks that there was a touch on the net on that block. The challenge whisperer. That's my self-proclaimed name for what <laughs> this is becoming for Anel Perez, but. By land, by air, by video review, if it ends this six-match losing streak, the celebration will be wild. The bench is ready to celebrate. It's like the ball dropping on New Year's. <laughs> it sure is. Seeing if there was a net touch. Just want to say, taking some time. Drama continues. 24-21, <laughs> it hangs in the box. Bill Stanley. Of course, you always want the climatic nature of a final point to finish off a match, but in this day and age of video review, you'll take whatever you can get. Yeah, this Columbus team will take it any way they can get it. You're right, a little anticlimactic though, <laughs> but we will see what happens. This one's taken a little longer than usual. 26 days it's been, 26 long days with six losses. And the team was sitting at 500 at the final week of March. Now five and 11. We're finally getting a look. Yeah, I don't no see touch. anything there. No. Atlanta stays alive. Linehan. Oh! A serve error. And finally, after 26 long and arduous days, the Fury are back in the win column. They beat the number one team in the Pro Volleyball Federation. This is a huge win for the Columbus Fury. The fans here in Nationwide Arena loving it. What a match Janasia Moore had. What a match Kendall Kipp had. Again, Megan Courtney Lush doing all the little things right to put her team over the top tonight. A fruitful night. Uh, Neil and Nationwide, the Columbus Fury have ended their six game losing streak and they've toppled down the cream of the crop in the PVF to do so. The Atlanta vibe and their seven game winning streak is history. Columbus with their first win since March 24th and that was against the team from Georgia. In four sets, three to one, they take the last three.
and hoping to take it now up the standings and what a way to begin this three match home stand. Yeah and you saw in the huddle there Megan Courtney Lush just given all kinds of positive vibes to her team as captain. She is so proud of the performance of all her teammates but boy she was clutch. Janasia Moore again taking the role of Reagan Cooper so what an outstanding job she did rising her level of play to really be the X factor here for the Fury. We cannot say enough about Kendall Kipp. Wow, what a force she was. I believe that she will get the recognition she deserved, a ma deserves a magnificent effort and really the difference maker tonight for this Columbus Fury team. Now the Fury have earned their flowers tonight with their celebrational photo at the net. Win number six, they're six and 11. Atlanta falls to 16 and five. They have a quick turnaround at Orlando on Sunday on CBS Sports Network. Kendall Kipp led the way with the double-double, 25 kills, 11 digs. Janasia Moore and Caitlin Hoard also in double-figure kills. Moore, 14 digs, 16 for Megan Courtney Lush. And Tori Stringer with 45 assists. Orlando and Grand Rapids will follow next weekend here for the Fury. And don't count them out because they do have games in hand and a lift like, and a win like this can lift a group up that's been battling for a long time in a lot of ways. For Audrey Flaw, the Hall of Famer, I'm Neil Seek and we wanna thank our great crew and thank you for watching the PBF on YouTube. Columbus, three sets to one. The six-game losing streak, sayonara. They take down the top team in the league. And then the seven-game winning streak of the Atlanta Vibe. Columbus, three sets to one the final. Thanks for watching from Nationwide Arena. Good night.